Hey everybody, welcome back to Blaze Lab. So today we're gonna to do a little bit of customization to the 7X mini lathe that we saw in the last video. If we look at this part here, this is called the saddle. On top of the saddle is the cross slide which moves across the ways and the compound which moves back and forth into the workpiece. So on these machines, there is a small block of iron underneath here on the front and the back and that's adjustable. So if we look down here, that's pretty much what this is. This is called a, a gib strip, a uh, gib adjuster, I think. Um, and as we look at it, there's three bolts that hold it down underneath. And there is uh, a nut with a, a set screw in the middle. And these help tension it and, and keep the right amount of tension pressed up against the bottom so that it's pinching up against this rail here so the carriage is always nice and tight the problem is that to adjust this you basically have to take the whole mechanism off do the adjustment put it back on do the adjustment take it back off and at some point you won't be able to slide it back on and when that happens, you, you have to loosen it back up and you'll, you'll find a spot that's pretty good towards this end of the machine. But as you start to move it down here, you might find some, some looser spots as, as this is cast. Um, some of this might not be properly ground down. So what we'd like to do here is twofold. Um, we'd like to replace this very soft piece of mild steel or iron, whatever they've got here, with a more uh, friction resistant piece of engraving uh, brass. And we'd also like to move the adjustment to the top. So instead of having to come under here to do adjustments or removing the whole carriage, it would be super nice if from the top we can adjust adjust all of the tightness of that. So the, the reason that we're actually going through all of this, just to take a little step back, if there, if there is looseness in here and there is play in this, this uh, casting that we see going across right here, when we're actually moving in to start machining uh, a piece of work, there could be vibrations, there could be um, movements in this piece that, that create tool marks and chatter on, on our work piece. And that, that's definitely not good, right? So I went out and I found uh, some plans, which I will link in the description, for the top adjusting gibs. So this is basically already laid out for us this can all be accomplished with just basic hand tools, two pieces of brass, one piece of square cold rolled mild steel, and just cutting brass, recreating the existing gib strip, uh, the larger holes on there, and just drilling them out on the drill press. So very, very simple stuff. Hit that jack jack, put it in pocket till I get back. I'm going downtown to see a man, and I ain't got time to shake your hand. Hit that jack jack, put it in pocket till I get back. Time and time waits for no man, and I ain't got time to shake your hand. Hit that jack jack, put it in pocket till I get back. I'm going downtown to see a man, and I ain't got time to shake your hand. Hit that jack jack, put it in pocket, plug it back. Time and time waits for no man, and I ain't got time.
All right, guys, we're back. So here it is. You can see the brass adjuster strips. You can see the steel bar. This is actually tapped into the back of the saddle. And we have four adjuster nut, four adjuster screws on top. So very simply, we can now adjust the tension on the way from the top side. We've actually got a pretty good tightness right now. It was, it was a little bit difficult to slide it on there. So um, that was pretty good. I, I was able to tighten the, the bolts that hold the brass on to a good tightness, uh, get those Loctited in and then get the adjusters to just start to make contact and go a little bit past that once I slid it all on. So this is looking pretty good. And if I try to move it, uh, there's not really any lateral play. No up and down play. A little bit in the back somewhere. Maybe, maybe in this corner just a tiny bit. So. I'll probably spend just a little bit of time seeing how tight I can actually get that to be before it starts to bind up and then just back off a little bit from there. But this is looking pretty good. This is uh, it's a lot firmer than it was before. So next up, we're going to keep going towards our end goal of converting this machine to CNC control. So. This axis is basically going to get a motor. A lot of this whole upgrade was to reinforce it and to, to make it more sturdy so that when we start computer controlling it, it doesn't blow up in our face. So next up, going to start looking at the cross slide. There's a little bit of backlash in here. Uh, the gibbs themselves look pretty tight. You know, this all slides pretty good. There's, there's not a lot of side to side play really. There's just a little bit of play where the lead screw meets, meets the handle. So as I look at the, the diagram for the CNC parts, uh, there's a, a thrust bearing, some other stuff that live between the motor and the lead screw in here. So I, I'm thinking that I can probably take a lot of the backlash out in there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this upgrade. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And uh, stay tuned.